begin talking about marriage and we're going to talk about the types of marriage, how it functions within a society, and also its economic benefits. Do all groups marry? No. All societies have customs governing how and under what circumstances sex and reproduction can occur and marriage generally plays a central role in that, but again, not all groups marry. For instance, they are, are of Indian, of India, the women have a series of relationship with men, and then her brothers act as father to her children, including the cost to raise them. And that's even if they acknowledge the biological father. But if we're going to define marriage, we could refer to it as a socially approved union that unites two or more individuals as spouses. Now the implications of this are that there's some kind of sexual union, there's some kind of permanence, and some type of common residence. And we're also going to talk about residence patterns. Now the functions of marriage, and these also kind of hold for the function of family, is that it regulates sexual behavior. Now I don't want to imply that s sexual relationships within marriage are the only acceptable type, because there are some societies where having sex outside of marriage is actually condoned, but under very specific circumstances. So for instance, the Toda of southern India a married woman can have a formal sexual relationship with certain men, like priests, with the husband's approval. So think about how that particular behavior functions within that society. And in the Kalinda in the Philippines, they have institutionalized married men taking mistresses. So children from the union receive smaller inheritances, and this usually only occurs if the wife is barren, and she often helps choose the mistress mistress. It fulfills the economic needs of marriage partners. So one of the things that happens through this process of marriage is that we begin to learn our gender roles and our family is going to help do that also. So who does what and what happens when you don't fulfill your roles? This is the process of enculturation, not acculturation. Enculturation. It perpetuates kinship groups, and marriage provides an institution for the care of children. There are various types of marriage. One is monogamy, and this is the most common form of marriage, and this is simply a union between two individuals. Now notice, sex is not a part of that definition. It's just a union between two individuals. Serial monogamy is accepted in many societies, and this is where you can have one spouse at any given time, but you can have several during your lifetime. So if somebody gets divorced or is widowed or wi then that would be and gets remarried, that's an example of serial monogamy. Then we have polygamy, and polygamy means multiple spouses at the same time. And there are actually two types of polygamy. There's polygyny which refers to a man with multiple wives, and this is actually the most common form of polygamy. And it's generally found in societies that need warriors, our frontier societies, somewhere where the ratio of women to men is high, and also where the rapid growth of the family is beneficial to the survival of the family. Usually practiced by men of high status, so they can afford it. And men usually take much younger wives, and this could be because it takes some time to build a resource base to be able to afford multiple wives. Then we have polyandry, and this is a woman with multiple husbands, and this is somewhat more rare. It's generally what we call fraternal polyandry, so a woman is married to brothers. And this is advantageous where resources are severely limited. So in some areas of Tibet where land is at a premium, we do see polyandry. Now there are some benefits to multiple spouses. So you have increased social status, you get a new set of affines or in-laws, people that can help you with trade, political alliances, support when needed. It provides you with a larger labor force. You often, particularly with po polygyny, have women to share the work. And the children have better chance to be provided for. There's also group marriage. This is extremely rare, and this is where several ma males excuse me, are married simultaneously to several females. Now we usually see this with polygyny, but not polyandry. 
So for instance, the Toda of India used to arrange marriage for a boy. Um, the girl was married not to a specific boy, but to all of his brothers as well. So if any of the brothers were then married, they were also married to that girl. And so you get several males and several females, and that's what a group marriage is. Symbolic is where marriages occur that don't establish any economic or social ties. So actually a nun does get married to Christ, and that's an example of a symbolic marriage. Fixed term are temporary marriages. This legitimizes a sexual relationship in societies where you're not allowed to have sex outside of marriage. And there might be some economic obligations, but they're going to be pretty minimal. So for instance, in Iran, soldiers are allowed to have temporary marriages in order to have legitimate sexual partners while they're off at war. And after the conflict is over, the marriage is dissolved, and there's no further obligation to the ex-wife. Fictive marriages are legal marriages that allows both partners to acquire social benefits with no family being set up. So U.S. nationals and immigrants sometimes marry in order for the immigrant to stay in the country. This doesn't always happen, and it's actually illegal, but it does happen from time to time. And there are several types of fictive marriages. We just talked about the green card marriage, but there's also the leveret, and this is where the kin of a man who's passed away provides a new husband for the widow and it's often one of the deceased man's brothers and this helps keep children in the family. We have the sororate which is the female version of the leveret um, and the advantage of both of these is that it cements marriage alliances and it provides the survivor with someone who will perform the duties of a spouse. We also have a ghost marriage and this is when let's say a young man has died before he had any legal heirs then one of his male kinsmen will marry a woman in the name of the boy have children but those children actually belong to the deceased boy so the deceased individual actually has his own family and his name gets passed down and so forth 